Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is the eighth video in our air law series, Canadian Aviation Regulations. And in this flight, we're going to be talking about visual flight rules. So visual flight rules, uh, that is opposed to instrument flight rules. Visual flight rules are with reference to the surface of the earth to navigate. We're responsible for our own terrain separation, our own traffic separation. And generally we're flying by looking outside. So when we talk about visual flight rules, there is a minimum weather uh, associated with visual flight rules. And unfortunately, you're gonna to have to memorize this, this chart. And this chart, other than the sample question, is the only part of this video uh, that makes a slide. So let's talk about controlled airspace first. And I'm gonna to try to, my best to help you wrap your head around this so you can memorize this as easy as possible. So. Anytime you're in controlled airspace or flying anywhere at night, you need three statute miles of flight visibility. You have to be in controlled airspace 500 feet vertically from cloud and one mile horizontally from cloud. In a control zone, additionally, you have to be 500 feet above the surface. So in a control zone, the minimum weather that you can fly in is be a ceiling of 1,000 feet. You're 500 feet above the ground and you are 500 feet below the cloud. In uncontrolled airspace above 1,000 feet, you uh, have to have a visibility of one statue mile during the day or three statue miles at night. You have to be 500 feet vertically uh, from cloud and 2,000 feet horizontally. In uncontrolled airspace below 1,000 feet, you need two statue miles of visibility during the day or three at night, and you have to be clear of cloud. So this is going to be your lowest weather. It's pretty rare that you're gonna be flying like three miles visibility is actually very poor visibility. It's not fog, but if you're flying VFR, you probably don't even wanna be out in three miles visibility, let alone one or two and just be clear of cloud. Now there's something else that is called special VFR. Special VFR is valid only in control zones, and you need to know that. Not all airspace, only in control zones, and you must have authorization from air traffic control. The VFR weather minimum for special VFR, one statute miles visibility and clear of cloud. So this is pretty much, it's terrible weather, but hey, you made it to an airport, you just need to land and, and get on the ground. This is when special VFR is really um, most important. Also, we have something called VFR OTT or VFR over the top. And this is a reasonably complicated subject and, and uh, most pilots aren't really familiar with how VFR OTT works. So for one, you need a special rating, similar to a night rating, you need a, a VFR over the top rating that consists of additional instrument training. And I'll tell you first off what VFR OTT is not. What VFR OTT is not, is seeing a hole in the cloud, circling up through the hole, getting on top of the cloud, flying to your destination, finding some little hole in the cloud, spiraling down through it and land. That is not VFR over the top. That is unfortunately illegal. What VFR over the top is, is you take off in an airport that has not a lot of clouds. It might be few, it might be scattered, but it's not broken. So you take off and you climb up uh, through, and now you're at, let's say eight, eight and a half thousand feet and you're cruising on a fair distance. And then all of a sudden, as you're flying, you notice, hey, wait a minute, this cloud layer below me is now broken or it's overcast. So instead of going back down underneath uh, the cloud, trying to get between the cloud and the ground, you just stay where it's safe at eight and a half thousand feet. But you've checked the weather and at your destination, the uh, it is uh, either clear or few or scattered cloud that you can descend down through it. And sure enough, by the time you get to your destination, you uh, the cloud layer is no longer overcast. So you're no longer with reference to the surface, but you're still flying in visual conditions. So if you're over the top, you need to have five miles of visibility and you have to be a thousand feet vertically uh, from cloud and you have to be 5,000 feet between layers. The destination can have a ceiling below 3,000 feet below cruise altitude below five miles of visibility, no thunderstorms or precipitation from one hour prior of the ETA to two hours after the ETA, if using the terminal area forecast. We'll learn about that in meteorology. 
or one hour prior to three hours after is using a graphical area forecast if no tap is available. So just to reiterate, you have four over the top, you take off, it's nice weather, all of a sudden a cloud layer forms below you, you keep flying over the cloud layer, and then it's nice weather again at your destination and you land. You do need additional training for that. So let's just jump straight to some uh, questions that are going to be found on your PPL exam or your PSTAR exam. So the first one, when operating in accordance with VFR aircraft shall be flown, a, clear of aerodrome traffic zones, so that doesn't really exist. Clear of control zones, no, that's not true at all. We fly into control zones all the time. C, with visual reference to the surface is going to be your correct answer. And then D, in compliance with all of the above, well, that's not correct because we don't have to be clear of control zones. And here's a question about helicopters because the helicopter pilots also have to write the pre-solo test. So uh, we're responsible for knowing their rules as well, unfortunately. Normally a helicopter in uncontrolled airspace at less than a thousand feet AGL may operate during the flight, uh, during the flight in visibility, which is not less than, and the correct answer is one mile. What distance from cloud shall an aircraft maintain when flying below 1,000 feet AGL within uncontrolled airspace? So, at least 2,000 feet horizontally and 500 feet vertically? Uh, no, that's what uh, the that's what you need uh, when you are uh, flying above 1,000 feet. At least one mile horizontally and 500 feet vertically? No, nope, that's a control zone. At least two miles horizontally and 500 feet vertically? No. Nope. And D, the correct answer, clear of cloud. Below 1,000 feet in uncontrolled airspace? space, you have to be just clear of cloud. Now let's talk about controlled airspace. When VFR flight within controlled airspace, a pilot must remain clear of cloud by at least, well, the answer is going to be 500 feet vertically and one mile horizontally. So A is correct. B, 500 feet vertically and 2,000 feet horizontally, is in uncontrolled airspace above 1,000 feet. And then the other ones are incorrect as well. Okay, here's a bit of a tricky one because you need to uh, recall earlier information on airspace. The minimum flight visibility for VFR flight within a low level area airway is. So the first thing you need to know is what kind of airspace is a low level airway? And if you recall from a couple lessons ago, a low level airway is controlled airspace. So in controlled airspace, we need flight visibility of three miles. So the correct answer is going to be D. So VFR flight in a control zone, a pilot must remain clear of cloud by at least, remember a control zone has the, the greatest uh, VFR weather minimum. So the correct answer, 500 feet vertically and one mile horizontally. Our next question, remember controlled airspace, a pilot must remain clear of cloud by at least. And controlled airspace is the same as a control zone, but you don't have to be 500 feet above the ground. So in controlled airspace, you must be clear of cloud by 500 feet vertically and one mile horizontally. ATC may authorize an airplane equipped with functioning two-way radio to transit a control zone under special VFR provided the flight visibility and when reported ground visibility are each not less than. And so you have to remember, special VFR is control zone only, and it is the lowest weather minima, and it is one mile for aeroplanes. Okay, so we have another stupid helicopter question. Uh, sorry about that, that's just the way it is. It's from your P-STAR test. ATC may authorize a helicopter equipped with functioning two-way radio to transit a control zone under day special VFR, where the flight visibility and when reported ground visibility are each not less than, well, for a helicopter, it's going to be less, it's going to be half a mile. The reason for this is a helicopter can slow right down where an airplane can't and proceed a much slower with, let's just say, more caution to avoid other obstacles. This concludes uh, Air Law 8 on visual flight rules. We'll see you at our uh, next lesson. Thanks a lot for joining me.